What is going on guys? So today we'll be taking a look at the Sling Player app for your Slingbox 500. So if you saw recently I actually did an unboxing and also I did a little how to set up your Slingbox 500 with your TV and all that good stuff. So today we're actually going to be taking a look at the Sling Player app for your Slingbox 500. So simply opening up the app here, we get our Sling Player screen right here. So first we're going to be taking a look at the iPad version. They do have two different versions. Uh, one for the iPad and also one for the iPhone. So a big gripe I have about the apps is that you will actually have to pay $14.99 for each app. So that's not going to be a universal app. You have to actually pay $14.99 for the Sling Player on the iPad and also $14.99 for the iPhone version. So that's kind of a, a little gripe I have. It, it's pretty expensive. $30 for two applications. Um, so you can actually be able to use your Slingbox 500 on your iPhone or iPad. Now we're going to be taking a look here at the iPad mini version. So first we get our little settings app right here. We also have connect, guide, directory, and help. So let's go ahead and check out our settings here. And we see that we have quite a bit of settings. We have video quality on cellular. You can turn that to auto. Video quality on Wi-Fi. Also I have that set on auto. Launch preferences, so here you can have it automatically connect and watch TV, automatically connect to guide or don't automatically connect. So I have it set to don't automatically connect right now. And we also have send sling feedback. Uh, we also have a home channel, so you can set a actual home channel right here. So whatever channel you want to set, whenever it first starts off, then you'll be able to set that channel there. We also have control bar on connection or show control bar on connection. So you can turn that on or off. Enable favorites, left and right gestures. You can turn that on and off. And uh, we'll get into that here because it does have gestures in the app itself. So you can actually control some things like your favorite channels. And then over here we have auto send, select dish users, privacy policy, and also sling player version. So let's go ahead and go back. So let's go ahead and connect right here. We'll hit, we'll tap on connect. And then that's going to be starting up and we'll take We'll see how long it'll take to actually launch. So it's taking a little bit. So there it goes. There's the actual TV here. This is going to be, I'm actually using Verizon files, by the way, if, if that really matters. But um, I got the TV, whatever's on TV right now, on my uh, Verizon files DVR. In the living room, that's what I have it connected to. And, and as you see here, we have a lot of controls. Uh, let's take a look up here on top right. Top right, we have... A little number pad here you can actually launch the number pad so you can select a uh, certain channel here so let's go ahead and put in MTV see what's on MTV right now and you see here this how long it takes uh, something else it does take a couple seconds to actually uh, launch the channel so let's go ahead and uh, go to the next because I don't be want to be watching this channel here <laughs> Now let's go ahead and check out what else we have. So like I mentioned, it does take a couple seconds to actually uh, change the channel and things like that. It's not going to be like immediate change. Um, you do have to wait a couple seconds. But up here we have our controller. So when you do set up your Slingbox 500, you saw in the last video, you actually could select the controller or it will select the controller for you. And so here's my Verizon Files controller. I can actually uh, use it like I would at home right here on my screen. Now here we can actually just simply click on like guide for instance. And then we'll go ahead and see that we have our program guide pop up right here in a second. There it goes. Now you actually have to control this with the remote control, which is, um, I mean, kind of unfortunate. But uh, typically, like I, I would in the beginning, I actually thought you can maybe tap on these, but you actually have to use the actual Slim Player um, buttons and everything. So if you want to actually mess with the guide and everything on here, you have to do it as if you're actually in front of the TV with the controller right here. So it's pretty cool that you get this little pop-up controller here and you get to just act like you are in front of the TV. But let's go ahead and tap out of this and we'll go ahead and tap right there. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the actual user interface of the Sling Player um, right here. So we get our rewind button, we get uh, our back button, play, 
and then pause and then skip forward and then of course fast forward right there and then what's cool is you can actually hit record so you can record TV or you can simply just click on live TV and then it'll go straight to live TV if you were maybe watching something uh, if you rewind it like a sports game or something like that we also have our info button right here and this will give you the information about the channel of course and then you see here there's the info and then we get the recall button so that will simply go back to the last channel it was on and then we get our volume slider right here and also if you are connected or if you do have a connected um, Apple TV you are able to simply click on this right here and then stream it to your Apple TV now I haven't actually personally tried this so I don't know how great the quality would be but then looking down here we have our guide but we'll take a look at that here in a second also we have our quality down here and you're able to either go from high definition quality to auto standard quality or audio only so you get to actually choose how you want it and then we have a favorites icon here this will give you access to all your favorite channels and I'll show you how to actually set your favorites here in a minute we also have our aspect a uh, little ratio thing so you can actually select how you want it to uh, actually display so if we hit zoom here for instance you see that the display actually zooms in and we get more of the uh, picture right there so let's go ahead and auto detect here and zoom out as well so here is also sources so you can actually select if you want um, composite component or HDMI so again depending how you have it connected you'll be able to change the settings on there so right now I have it connected through component on my TV and here I have disconnect so you can of course disconnect the TV but let's go back into the guide here and we'll be able to see more on the guide so we have our guide right here if we actually just simply swipe up you see there you'll be able to see your guide you have all your all your guide here and then you'll be able to select a channel here also another thing that is pretty cool is you'll be able to select favorites by tapping on this little arrow right there and then you'll be able to select a favorite channel so for instance if I want to favorite this one I just hit that little heart button right there and then I can go over here to my favorites where I have several more favorites and I'm able to see um, or I can select these channels here that are on my favorites list but going back we also have a, an HD section which is always great so this actually splits up your HD uh, quality content and your just standard uh, stuff here so this is going to be all your standard and plus the HD channels uh, but we do have this little uh, sidebar here so you can select um, how far down you want to go in your channel or your actual guide and you see here we'll be able to simply tap on one of the channels maybe you have several channels if you have like thousands of channels you'll be able to use this on the side it'll be really useful instead of having to scroll through all of the channels like this but like I said you have HD here and you also have your favorites which is always great so you can just select the, your favorite channels uh, immediately so you can favorite those your favorite channels and then you'll be able to access those immediately uh, without having to scroll through all your guide and everything so we also have a little refresh button here so I'll just refresh the actual content here your TV guide you're able to also swipe from left to right and see more times or what other channels are available at other times so let's go ahead and go back here also there is gestures if you swipe left and right you'll be able to browse through your favorite channels so this is going to be one of my channels that are set in my favorites here in a second there it goes so we swipe again we'll access our other channel that we just recently selected and then we swipe again and we'll be able to just browse through our favorite channels which is pretty cool so that's actually going to be the iPad version of Sling Player now let's go ahead and take a look at the iPhone version right down here so let's go ahead and see how the Sling Player works on the iPhone version alright so when launching the Sling Player we do get this little screen here and again it's gonna be very similar to the iPad version 
So we have connect, we have our guide, directory, my media, and settings. So let's go ahead and check the my media here. So in my media, it was pretty cool because you can actually set or uh, share your albums from your iPhone, things like that, and it will actually save save it to whatever you want. So for instance, if you do have a USB hooked up to your Slingbox 500, then you'll be able to stream this content onto your actual uh, USB drive or whatnot. So I think that is a pretty cool feature. Let's go back here and now let's take a look at um, our actual TV guide and stuff. So we'll go ahead and connect. And I did have my iPad connected. So since it is currently running, it's going to ask me if I want to disconnect the other user. So you can only access this one um, one device at a time. So let's go ahead and hit yes. And then it'll start my Sling Player here. Now in the Sling Player app on the iPhone, we do get several th similar things. We actually will get everything similar to the iPad version. We have our favorites right here. We can access our favorite channels. We also have a remote. Now the remote is not going to be, of course, an actual remote here. We have a different type of remote here. So we have different tabs up here. We have our all tab and we also have our keypad. And then this will of course give you your keypad. We got the D-pad. You can actually uh, go up and down, left to right and select whatever you want. And also we have our record button and the exit button. And then we have our DVR here. So here you'll be able to change uh, your DVR. So for example, you can pause the channel or you can play it you can fast forward rewind all that good stuff so you'll be able to do that you can also move this here so we'll be able to change this channel just by simply swiping up or swiping down so you also have gestures on this you actually have more gestures than the ipad version because the ipad version you'll be able to only swipe left and right and you would be able to access your favorites here you'll be able to go up or down or you can swipe up or down and then change the channel and if you swipe left and right you'll be able to change to your favorite channels just like that. So let's go back to the remote down here and then we'll see, we'll go through our all remote here. So here we have our guide, all that good stuff and we have our controllers. Now I wish there is some type of way this could be um, kind of designed a little better because it just kind of, I don't know, it just seems really sloppy to me, um, swiping left to right and all that to access different things so I don't know I think maybe a little change on that would be great but uh, we go to our guide here and our guide will be able to again access our favorites our HD channels and all of our channels right here so it'll similar real similar to the iPad version here so that is your guide and then we also have our DVR we also have our quality here we can change it from auto to high def or high quality and standard quality and just audio only. So also we have options and we have our volume slider at the bottom along with our little airplay icon right there. Now you may be wondering how this uh, how this works when it's connected to just straight LTE, uh, no type of internet connection. So let's go ahead and check this out real quick. Let me turn off my Wi-Fi here and then we'll open up back our sling player and then now I'm back on LTE here. So I'll go ahead and connect and it's gonna load. And it actually is pretty fast when it comes to just cellular instead of Wi-Fi only. So we'll see the quality here and the quality seems like it's still great. No real change in the quality. It seems like it loads very fast, especially because I'm on LTE. So, I mean, that's another reason, but I'm pretty sure on 4G and everything, you'll get great uh, video as well. So this seemed like it doesn't take that much um, data. It's, it's similar to like Netflix and things like that. So you won't really have to worry about data charges unless if you stream like continuously. Um, if you just watch maybe like an hour or so of actual TV while you're out using your cellular uh, data, then you shouldn't really have a problem. But um, it, it like I said, it's just similar to Netflix data. It didn't seem like it actually used too much data whenever I just used it over LTE. So guys, that's gonna be a look at the Slim Player app for your iPhone and iPad. Now overall, I think the actual apps are awesome, but it's just the price point. I'm not really a big fan of the price. 
you have to buy them separately, the iPad and the iPhone version. So you will be spending about $30 on both if you want to get both. They're not universal. So that is like a gripe that I have when it comes to the applications. But function wise, it's great. You can actually access your TV from anywhere in the world. So I think that is pretty cool. But anyways, guys, stay tuned for my full review of the actual Slingbox 500. Uh, that'll be coming up pretty soon. So be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not yet subscribed. Also, hit that like button if you did like this video. Not only helps me, but it supports the channel as well. And if you're not following me on any of my social networks like Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and Instagram, links will be down below in the description. And like I mentioned earlier, if you feel like being awesome, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you'll be notified when I come out with my future videos along with my review on the Slingbox 500. Anyways, guys, thanks a lot for watching, and I will catch you all on the next one. All right? Peace.